The historical black colleges and universities were those institutions established before 1965, and many of them were founded during the mid to late 1800s to educate those persons who had been enslaved, to give them the opportunity to participate as citizens of our society. During the 1950s and 60s, and from the establishment before integration, this is the only place that African Americans could go to get an education. The other schools were not open. We had a closed society. so. Our HBCUs played that historic role of helping America become more of a democracy and engaging people and helping to prepare them so that they can contribute to the betterment of this nation. Tougaloo College was, is one of those institutions founded in 1869. Even in its early days, it always built a bridge with the community. This was always a place that people could come, whether it was the American Red Cross to distribute goods and services for those persons who had been part of the war, or just inviting people in to participate in the activities that were held on this campus. And in the 1950s and 60s, Tougaloo moved to center stage when Jackson was getting involved in the civil rights movement. And they moved center stage with many students being involved. Social activism was very high here at this campus. We had professors like Ernst Berinsky, who was teaching the students sociology and forming units within the Jackson community. This was the only place that blacks and whites could really come and sit together without fear of reprisal. Tougaloo and Millsaps College did a lot of things together in terms of classes, in terms of social uh, activities on the campus here. Now, Tougaloo students did not likely go to Millsaps as often, but Millsaps people would come here. And in Dr. Berensky's social forums classes, that's where he would bring in speakers and people from the white community would come to hear those. And because he was interested in uniting people, people would sit around the table and he had the students to s leave one chair vacant so that people who would come in who were white would be sitting beside an African-American student at the time. Tougaloo played an important role in the civil rights movement, beginning with a group of students who are identified as the Tougaloo Nine. These students, uh, working with Megra Evers, decided to take the risk to integrate the downtown public library that was uh, not open to African Americans at that time. So they staged a read-in and they were arrested. And that really created a lot of um, awareness and activity among, in, among residents of Jackson and more people became involved. And the movement began to move forward into Tougaloo College campus with the support of the president at that time and the administration, faculty, and professors, because it was something that they believed in. And they did not put any kind of restrictive um, regulations on the students from participating in the larger community. And that, that was the beginning. And from there, uh, people like uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, Robert Kennedy, Julian Bond, Bob Dylan, uh, Harry Belafonte, Sidney Poitier, all of the personalities that were coming to lend their voices to change social change here in Mississippi came to Tougaloo College. They found a safe place. They found an opportunity to bring people in and work together to devise the strategies that would uh, reform Mississippi, change Mississippi, change the political fabrics of the state, uh, and make us a little bit better as a state and a nation because I do think that the activities that took place here in Mississippi informed democracy and the nation and even global democracy as, na as places around the country began to look at change and how to be get more citizens involved. I think they did look to the United States and they did look to the activities in the South. And there was no more better place than the state of Mississippi at that time to look for and to look at how Mississippians were able to go through social change and how they were able to move beyond that, move from a closed society to an open society. Tougaloo received many threats, and I think the, one of the most critical threats was the state of Mississippi's attempt to revoke the charter to keep Tougaloo from operating as a college. But we were able to overcome that. Uh, and because Tougaloo, again, was private and we had the gates, the historic gates there, we could close those gates at night. At that time, the president and the faculty members, um, some of the men and the security guards, would actually uh, stand guard on the campus so that they couldn't get in, but the, the gates would be locked and people would flee from the Ku Klux Klan and, and another part of Mississippi and come to Tougaloo and they would just say, if I could get through those gates, they knew that they would find safety here. So Tougaloo was that safe place for many people because uh, of its independence, 
but also tell people it wasn't just because we're an independent uh, college. It's the way that Tougaloo College believed that education should align with the social issues of the time. And one of the interesting things about young people, when they begin to believe in something, they know no fear. Maybe because, as my mother used to say, we, young people don't have sense enough to fear. But you get caught up in the adrenaline, you get caught up in the activity, and you get caught up in the moment. So you really don't stop to think about the risks that are involved. And I'm sure parents were, parents were disturbed. But I think parents understood that this was a time that even young students could make a difference. And it was their time to step onto the stage and lend their voices and their feet and their minds to a movement whose time had come.